Hi guys, welcome to Subscribers Draw My Nails episode 9, Valentine's Day edition. This is a series where I try to make your nail designs, drawings come to life. Thank you so much to everyone who submitted a design. I loved all of the designs. You guys are probably sick of me saying that I love like the aesthetic of Valentine's Day, but they were all so cute and so creative. For this video, we're going to continue with what we did in our previous episode where I do five designs, one design per nail. And I gave you guys a little bit of a challenge this time where I did not want any sort of direction in words. So no clarifying if things were glitter, a matte or shiny top coat. I just thought it would be fun to mix it up a little bit and give me a little bit more leeway on the designs. And I thought it would be fun to just sort of see what I thought. And if I did your design today, please let me know down below if I did it how you thought I would or if I was way off. Before we get into the designs, I like to make sure to put this out there that these are not my designs. And if you recreate them, please make sure to credit that person that I mention if they wanted to be mentioned. <laughs> not everyone does, but still do please tag me because I'd love to see. So let's get into our first design. Our first design is this pink and what looks to me like a lava lamp. I don't know if it was intended to be a lava lamp, but just that's what it looks like to me when I look at it. So I thought I would finally attempt a long lava lamp nail. I know a lot of you have wanted me to do longer lava lamp or aquarium nails for a really long time. So I thought it would be fun to finally try to do one. So let's give it a try. For me, this one could be interpreted into a lot of different ways. For me, I look at it and I see a lava lamp and I know everyone's been wanting me to do a lava lamp nails for a really long time. I have a lot of steam today, so let's just start out really, really strong. I'm starting out with this 3XL a prey tip because it has a really, really high apex with a lot of room for lava lamp activity. I'm going to start out by making the backing for this. And I just want to do that in acrylic, just a really, really, you know, just like thin layer. I'm following the guide on this form as it almost perfectly was the shape that I need the back for the tip. And hopefully keep that flat while it dries. Now I'm pressing this in and I'm hoping that the acrylic will sort of dry and just be the back, make it super easy like that. Then I'm also going to try to make the part that will go horizontally to divide my nail and the liquid. And that's pretty much just gonna be like a nice big little puddle. Okay, I think we're actually pretty good. Obviously I need to fix a couple small little holes. I'm just going to clean up the edges of this now cause it's looking not as nice and sleek as it should. Now I feel like we've gotten to the fun part, got a nice flat back on that and it is ready to go on. It would fit like that. Obviously I will paint over some of this. Let's do, I think the inside and then the rest will be painted on. We're gonna use some baby oil. I'm gonna put a little bit of this pigment in there. That might've been a little too much. It is so pretty. These are the glitters I'm gonna be using. I'm really nervous because I don't wanna mess this up. I don't have a syringe, so I have that working against me. I think that much. So I think we still need a little bit of room for the hearts. Well, hopefully that's good. And then now I need to seal that up. I have my little finger and I'm gonna glue it at first. Hopefully not glue my fingers. Oh God, okay. This is rubbing alcohol so I'm trying to clean this so that it's dry. I don't want to get any oil on it. There's a little spot behind there. I'll fill that in. I'm trying to get a super dry bead of acrylic. How does long hair pre nails make it look so easy? While we let that all dry, I'm going to do the nail designs on the top of the nail. I'm gonna use cupcake. I'm guessing that down here it's meant to be like a little heart but one uh, better than that. Uh, if this was your design, <laughs> hopefully even if you didn't intend for it to be a lava lamp nail, hopefully you still like it. I thought it would be fun to like branch out a little bit. I can see in the picture it does look like there is a little bit of glitter going on. So I want to take this really pretty rose gold shade. Look at how pretty this is. 
It's one of my favorites. And just put a small thin layer over that just before we top coat it. See, there we go. That adds like just what it needed. I'll do my final top coat now. I'm going to go ahead and just top coat behind it too, just for good measure. And voila, hopefully it looks like it should. I'm actually really happy with my first like little actual lava lamp nail. It looks way better than the previous lava lamp nails that I did. So let's move on. Our next design is this one. I love the teddy bear. I've been dying to use my teddy bear molds again and I think I have a better way to do it this time. I do also appreciate the little color palette on the side. You guys know we love a little 3D element, so let's get into it. If I remember correctly, last time with the bear, I filled it up with gel. I think this time I want to do acrylic, and then I want to paint the bear afterwards. So let's start off by just making the acrylic bear. I'm trying to do some drier beads, so we can let this sort of just like fall in and sculpt and hopefully not take too, too long to harden. I'm gonna get the base down on this and then come back and fill out like the back for being hollow. For a lot of the nails today, I'll just be using these McCart pump ups. These are just some press-ons essentially. And I am sort of trying to make it so I do have a full set of nails. So I am doing different sizes. I don't believe that I have a cream color like the base is. So we're gonna have to create that. I'm gonna roll with that. quick top coat before we just do the little bit of base nail art. Very glad that it's not too complicated. Hopefully I can do the roses. I've never attempted roses like that or ever, I don't think. I'm most nervous for these roses, so I don't, I mean, I don't know how to even start. This gel doesn't look nearly as dark when it's spread a little bit thin like that. If you can't tell, I'm not really going back and like fixing any of these little roses or anything like that since they are so abstract. I'm trying to not worry about them being perfect. I don't think that would be a good use of my time if you know what I mean. Do they kind of just look like little uh, swirls? Yeah, but it's, <laughs> we're just gonna roll with that. I'm just gonna add a couple little itty bitty hearts. Hopefully it's been enough time for the bear. <gasps> oh my gosh, it looks so good. Oh wait. Am I missing its snout? Oh, I am missing its snout. No. Other than that, I think that actually looks really good, but you know what would be even smarter is if I did the acrylic in the base color of the red. So it's okay that we have to redo it. It's not always gonna go, and I'll try to make sure that I don't have any big air bubbles like that. So try to. I'm going to use, what is this? In Love from an acrylics. Super, super deep color. And it might even work out better since these acrylics are super, super pigmented and a little bit more on the drier side. Hopefully I'll let us do it, you know, set it really quickly and whatever. I'm trying to just make sure I set it in everywhere. You're like, yeah, it's blurry. I cannot see. I have no idea what you're talking about. Here we are sort of, I'm kind of just trying to push it all over and like push it down a little bit, make sure we're there and getting into all the crevices. I think we're good on that front. I'm just gonna try to like, in case there are any air bubbles. Oh, yep, I saw one come up. Okay, hopefully that's better. Try number two. <gasps> Whoa, look at how nice that looks. So much better. Again, I know the colors aren't gonna be exact. I think it's fine, but I'm very happy with how nice and like shiny that looks, very clean. coming out so cute. I'm gonna do the little black details. I've gotten this far without having to wipe something off. That smile gotta come off. But I feel like we've done pretty good so far. Usually I'm like wiping stuff off left and right. First time with the smile, not too bad. Nope, that looks evil. I'm 
I'm going to try to put the literal smallest highlights in the eyes to try to make it look a little less, I don't know. Oh my gosh, you know what this looks like. <laughs> I just had a flashback with one of my first real serious boyfriends. We had a really tumultuous, 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 nope. We didn't have the best relationship. It was up and down a lot. It was not great. And we were arguing over the course of a Valentine's day one year. And he gave me a bear that kind of looked like this, kind of creepy, you know, whatnot for Valentine's day. It basically was like a little devil bear and he gave it to me because he said that it reminded him of me. That's what this looks like. But the one in the picture looks really cute. Looks really cuddly. Anyway, here's our base and here's our bear. I can't decide if I want it shiny or matte. I actually think I might want to do it matte. I'm gonna take my matte top coat. And then I'm going to attach the bear with acrylic. And here we are. I actually love it. I've been wanting to use this bear mold again for a while, so I'm glad we got to do it. Let's move on now. Design number three comes from Taylor, and she created this box of chocolates design, which I thought was so cute. And this time I wanted to try to do some smaller detailed drawings. I have watched a couple videos on it and I'm trying to get a little bit better at those like really, really fine little details. And I thought that this was a good little challenge. And also it's just like what else encapsulates Valentine's Day than just like a nice box of chocolates. So I wanted to do this one as soon as I saw it. So let's see how the nail art comes out this small. <laughs> I'm going to be using a e-nail couture tip. I think that's like a nice perfect size. I did trim it a little bit since this does look like a shorter nail. I think we should just go ahead and make the palette before we do anything else since there's a lot going on here. I know I'm gonna need quite a few shades of brown. Brown tan color for mixing. I got a bunch of tile samples when I was looking at something for renovating my bathroom and now I've just started using them as my palettes. And let me tell you, 10 out of 10 recommend. They are great because they're just like stone and I think they were like two or three bucks. And I need a lot of space. So like little ones for working with, mm -mm, won't cut it for me. I'm going to start off with the darkest brown. Could definitely almost look like a deep, deep, deep purple if you do a thin coat of it. Okay, let's try to do the lines down the middle. That was nerve wracking. And there's also a super thin outline that I'm also going to do. There we go, got our nice base on. Now a matte top coat because we all know I'm gonna mess up and it's so much easier to wipe things off of a matte top coat and have all of our work underneath sealed in. I hope it's not too hard to see for you guys. Like it is just dark on dark, you know? Okay, here we go. Let's really try to do a work smarter, not harder. So let's do all of the chocolates that are this shade. Then I think I need to mix a little bit of a lighter shade. I'm taking a little bit of creative liberty with the shapes for just how they're going to look a little bit just to fill up the space a little bit more. And then I know I need a warmer version of this shade. Good thing we only need itty bitty teeny tiny amounts. Okay, is that it for all of the brown shades? I think it is. Now we will do white chocolate. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I don't like white chocolate. I don't know what it is about it. Not a fan, never been a fan. Now we'll do the heart. I haven't been doing like a second coat if it's not bright enough, but I will absolutely for this one. Otherwise you can't see it like at all. Okay, now we have to do tiny, tiny little itty bitty details. <laughs> this is a really old brush. I'm gonna see if I have a brush that isn't, uh, I don't know what this is called, frayed. Oh my gosh, I do. Look at how itty bitty teeny tiny this brush is. Okay, the little drizzles are so much harder <laughs> than I anticipated. Probably not gonna be very accurate at all, but I'm gonna do what I can. 
Okay, wow. I think this one should stay matte. I don't think shiny would look good or would it? I don't know. I don't know what would differentiate the colors more. I can always go back with a shiny top coat afterwards if we feel like it doesn't look right. Looking at it now, I think I might wanna do shiny. I'll cure this and then we'll see. Or maybe not. It is so cute. I love this one so much. Up next is this Cherry Blossom Tree by Maria. This is such a cute design. I love cherry blossoms, like a Sakura Hearts tree. I absolutely love it. Again, I was really leaning towards some like small little drawings and stuff and this was just so cute and so creative. Valentine's Day, but also just like a nice little work of art that I'm really excited to do. So let's get into it. I already know I'm gonna be hopping around quite a bit with the background, just the shades, because it's not quite marbled and it's not quite ombre. It looks just like a multi-color blurred pastel background. So I'm just gonna sort of put some colors on, you know, mush them around and see what looks best. But I'm gonna start with this shade as a base. Like I see some tiny, tiny, tiny bits of like green, purple, blue, just a little bit more of a muted cream color. I'm just gonna pat it around. I am truly shocked. It actually looks so close. I'm gonna start with the branches. I'll start down here. Ooh, that's hard. <laughs> I'm gonna cure that and I think I'm gonna go over it again because it's looking a little bit too purpley. So I'm just gonna do that really quick. Now for the hearts, hopefully not too hard with how itty bitty teeny tiny these are gonna be. I feel like that might be too light. I can't really see it. Okay, hopefully this will be better. I've gone ahead and done all the hearts and did a little bit of an outline on them like the drawing has, but it muddled it a little bit. I feel like it's a tiny bit hard to see, but honestly, this is so small that I felt like that might happen. So for the last thing, I'm going to go and just do little itty bitty, almost like dashes, almost like leaves in the distance. And I think this one should be shiny for sure. I absolutely love this one. Look at how beautiful it is. That's such a good idea. So cute. Our last design is from Art by Lila. And when I saw this, for some reason, it made me think of that one design that I did with the 3D printed nails. That was so bad. And then this, just the blue, the eyelashes, it just made me think of it. So I don't think that she meant it like this, but to me, I took this as a little personal challenge to try to redeem myself on that nail art because that was pretty bad. Looking at her page, she does amazing art and I think this is just her style. But for me, I saw it and I was like, I gotta try to kill that. So. I don't know. It's really, really good. And it's gonna be really, really small since this is the pinky nail. So I don't know. Hopefully I'm able to do her proud, but we'll see. So for this nail, I'm going to spare you guys about five minutes of watching me make this, this, and this. Instead, I just decided to do the easy way now and just file a charm I already had. And this is what we will be using now because I felt like I was a kindergartner just doing random arts and crafts and I don't think it was a good use of my time to try to make it from scratch. But I was using this bubble gum gel from Enel Couture. This stuff is really cool. It is Enel Couture's version of the gel that basically doesn't stick too much. Like you can see it just like, kind of like if you were to poke slime it just like won't stick it is however a little bit stickier than the vetsy version if you watched that video even though it was a little bit stickier it was still really easy to work with while i was doing all of this also look at how cute it's like a little cauldron i'm just gonna rub this in acetone now probably get the pink off yep eh, not worth it i'm gonna rough this up a little bit and i do believe we are going to have to make a custom color for this. To me, it looks like a diluted orange red, but not quite diluted with white, like diluted with like tan. Let's just see where this takes us. A little bit more salmon-y than I would think. 
I'm gonna add like the smallest little touch of yellow. Well, that's not very small, that's okay. Okay, I think that's actually fine. So I'm gonna paint that and the sides. And one more coat just on the front here. That's such a pretty color. I love warm tone pinks. If you're a pink girly, you have a favorite tone of pink. For mine, it's a warm pink like this. I much prefer a more salmony pink than a like purple pink. While that's curing, I'm gonna make a slightly darker tone for the outer part of the heart. Something I love is that I feel like over time, my color matching skills have gotten so much better, like just being able to sort of eye it, and I love that. Okay, now I'm gonna do the outside of it. I'm a little nervous because this should be the easiest part of this painting, and yet it's still not going uh, as smoothly as I was hoping. I think it's safe to assume that the sides are probably also that color. I'm going to keep these shades on my palette in case I mess up and need to cover any of the face, but I'm just going to lay out my colors for everything now. Okay, I think we're ready. Nope, actually just kidding. I'm going to put a matte top coat on this. Okay, hopefully redemption from that one face on the 3D nails. Ah! I didn't, you didn't see that. Okay, let's go. Going with a like paint by numbers approach, sort of like do one color at a time. We're a little wonky, just a little bit. Okay, you know what? Considering we're gonna be going over some of that, I'm just gonna cure it. <laughs> now I'm gonna just go ahead and do the dark blue. I feel like I need a brush with like a single hair in it. Does anyone else do that? Like I feel like I have to work upside down on one side because it's easier for me to work with it closer to my hand. I'm gonna jump around a little bit to the lips because I wanna do the black outline at the same time for everything. I wanted to darken up this red a little bit. It didn't look like super, super bright, but it wasn't quite as dark as that red we were using earlier. I think I forgot about a little bit of the blue underneath the eyes. Okay, I think now we're gonna do the black. I'm just gonna go for it. I am going to be curing this black occasionally because if I get like a good line down, I should just save it. Nope, uh-uh, that's gotta be completely wiped off. Yo, those eyelashes are hard. <laughs> I think that's as good as we're gonna get on those top eyelashes. Okay, I've done my absolute best to try to make these even. I can sit here all day and do like tiny little touch-ups here and there, but I can't do that. I was gonna do the pink, but I think I need to do the black eyes first. Nope, that does not look right at all. I almost forgot to do the black on the lips while we were at it. Now the pastel pink highlights. Start with under the eye. Oh, it's so hard to see because it's so light like the white is. I think I've done so much on this that I'm going to do another layer of matte top coat to just sort of like even everything out, even out the texture and everything like that. It's a little bit, not bumpy, but I'm, I can't say it's like 100% even on there. And this matte top coat is pretty thick so we can try to just even out everything. And hold it upside down for a little bit so that all of the gel pools evenly. Okay, we'll try the eyes now. I feel like it's just gonna have a little bit of a harder time showing up on the black. We're nearing the end with this, so I'm just going to do a couple small like little touch-ups. I need to do this, um, I don't know what this would be, like a little scri blue scribble. Lastly, I will do some white highlights. I'm going to draw on the white highlights on this. I don't know if they were meant to be drawn on or not, but I think that it'll give it a nice feel. And it's pretty much done. Let's put a glossy top coat on this because it's very obvious that it's supposed to be glossy. Mine definitely looks off brand. Uh, definitely not exactly. She kind of looks a little cross-eyed. That's okay. Probably by far one of the most difficult nail arts I've ever attempted, just it being so small and the drawing being so good and detailed. While that's curing, we should work on the nail itself. A second coat. And then, because why not, I'm just going to add in a little bit of a darker color on the side here. 
like it has in the drawing. I know that it's probably just to show like dimension and stuff, but I have a little bit of a darker color here. I might just add a little bit, you know, won't hurt. And I'm also going to draw the highlights on. And there it is. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want me to continue to do subscribers draw my nails, please make sure to give this video a like. If you are wanting to submit a drawing, I will post the template at some point when I plan to do the next episode on Instagram and I will usually highlight it on my story, on my page, and I usually also post it here on my community tab on YouTube. Once again, if this was one of your designs, please let me know how I did and how close I was able to get it to what you had envisioned. I hope you guys have or had a great Valentine's Day if you celebrate it or overall just have a really great February. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will hopefully see you next time. Bye.